a viewer of the AvWeb channel, you're probably a pilot. At least we hope you are. And if you've flown much at all, you will have thought about that thing which we all wish to avoid, crashing. Now, no sane pilot plans to crash an airplane, so it's safe to say that all crashes are a surprise. Usually crashes happen because a chain of small oversights or mistakes add up to a situation that eventually overwhelms the pilot. In the aviation press, we write about this stuff all the time under the high-minded assumption that learning about the other guy's screw-up will help you avoid making the same mistake yourself. While that's true, it's also a little like gawking a pile-up on the freeway. Otherwise, there wouldn't be an entire YouTube channel devoted to Russian dash cam footage of car crashes. Admit it, you can't not click on this stuff. But back to the high road. In this video, I want to look at the accident pattern for these guys, light sport airplanes. Now, when these aircraft were being proposed 15 years ago, lots of people said they'd have a terrible accident record because they're so light and pilots could fly them without requiring a lot of training. But is that true? Time to find out. First, the numbers. They aren't very big. Light sport airplanes were supposed to be cheap. They aren't. So they would sell a lot. They don't. To put things in perspective, if all the piston airplanes in the U.S. fleet were represented by this basketball, the light sport share would be, by comparison, not a soccer ball, not a baseball, nor a golf ball, not even a cat's eye marble, but a blueberry, and a pretty small one at that. So if you were paying attention in college statistics class, you'll remember that making big conclusions about small numbers is fraught with problems. But we have to work with what we've got, and it's fair to make some general observations from the data we do have. Now, we didn't study every single light sport model out there because, well, I have limited attention span. You know, so much dash cam footage, so little time. So we contain this to the top 10 selling light sport models in the U.S., and here they are. A caveat here. This data comes from the FAA's U.S. registry, and it lags a little bit. So these model totals are just a little bit low. Here's something interesting. The best-selling brand isn't the cheapest. It's the most expensive, or nearly so. That would be the Cub Crafters line. The cheapest models, the AeroPro and the Pipistrel, happen to be the lowest sellers. That kind of tanks the idea that cheap light sports would sell better because they are cheap. Now time for math class, specifically division. Accident rates are calculated by dividing the number of accidents by what's called the exposure basis or exposure units. In aviation, that's usually blocks of 100,000 hours of flight time. So if an airplane type accumulated, say, 500,000 hours and had eight accidents, it has an accident rate of 1.6 per 100,000 hours, which in the real world would be terrific. But the real world turns out to be a lot messier than that. For general aviation as a whole, the overall accident rate is about 6 per 100,000, and the fatal rate is just under 1. The good news is that that's the lowest it has been in years. But for light sport airplanes, it's not quite so pretty. An FAA study done of personal light sport flying found that the overall accident rate for light sport airplanes was, wait for it, a whopping 29.8, and the fatal rate was 5. That's five times the general aviation average. Can that be right? Well, yeah, maybe. I might quarrel with the actual number, but my own review of these 10 models shows a similar pattern. Here's the results. And just for comparison, I threw in the Cessna 172. All but one of the light sport airplanes have a higher accident rate than the Cessna 172, and the bottom five are between at least three and five times higher. The fatal accident rate for light sport airplanes is similarly higher. Now another caveat, obtaining accurate fleet hours is impossible, so I used average hours estimated by the General Aviation Manufacturers Association for light sport airplanes. That's hardly ideal, but it's the best available. So what's going on here? Are light sport airplanes less safe, or are the pilots flying them less skilled? It could be a little bit of each. Almost half of all accidents were landing or takeoff accidents. Losing it on the runway in a crosswind, hard landings, overshoots, undershoots, you name it. 
That's higher than we see for standard category airplanes and for general aviation overall. Things like VFR and IMC and control flight and terrain are lesser factors in light sports, and that makes sense because they're flown in day VFR conditions. Judging pilot skill, well, it's a little more difficult for this group of accidents. The average total pilot time was almost 2,500 hours. That ain't no neophyte. And a lot of these guys are ATP or commercial pilots, not recently trained sport pilots, although quite a few are students. Some are older pilots getting back into aviation because they no longer need a medical to fly an LSA. Only a small number appear to be actual sport pilots. The light sports skeptics warn that the low wing loading and light control forces would be a factor in accidents, and it looks like they may be right. A Cessna 172 has a wing loading of 14 pounds per square foot. A 182 is 18 pounds. Light sport airplanes? Typically 10 pounds, sometimes a little less. What that means is that light sport airplanes are kites and turbulence, so they get bounced around easily. Couple that with light control forces, and they're a handful on even marginally windy days. And in the 200 plus accident reports I researched for this video, that comes up over and over again. Pilots get into a jam over the runway, then they make it worse by over controlling because the control forces are so light. This single factor may go a long way toward explaining why the light sport accident rate appears to be higher. So what's the takeaway here? Is there a takeaway? Back to basketballs and blueberries. I'm going to predict that as the light sport fleet expands and we gain more experience with these airplanes, the accident rate will slowly improve. Bigger numbers, better results. It's going to be a slow slog though, like years. Let me go back to the accident rates again and look at an airplane with one of the lowest accident rates compared to one with a much higher rate. Again, Cub Crafter sells the most light sports in the U.S., but it has a low accident rate. Flight Design sells the second most, but it has a higher rate. Now, logically, because the Cub Crafter is a tail dragger, you'd expect it to have a higher rate because tail draggers are notorious ditch lovers. The Flight Design, on the other hand, is one of the best handling LSAs out there in its tricycle gear, so less worry about ground loops. But if the Flight Design line has a quirk, it's speed land it too fast and try to force it on, and it can get impolite. There's one other point. Both companies offer training, but Cub Crafters offers a week-long training course for its airplanes, and the company says two-thirds of owners complete that course. One week. Some jet courses are shorter than that. Other companies offer training too, but none are quite that extensive. As the airlines and the military have learned, that training stuff really works. Otherwise, the main takeaway is to learn to land the damn airplane, because that's where half the risk of accidents are. The focus should be on speed control all the way to touchdown and stop. Too much speed is usually worse than too little. After that, if you keep from running out of gas and running into weather, you'll be just fine. You can find a full analysis of light sport accidents in the August 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine at aviationconsumer.com. Yeah, you got to subscribe, but we got to pay for this stuff somehow. And while you're tapping your credit card info in, please excuse me. I've got a bunch of Dascam footage to review. I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching. And try not to drive like that.